many, many of them being brainwashed by this fear ideology and and just dogma, like all these socialist things. You, if you look here, you won't see no minorities, no LGBTQ, no fight Antifa, whatever people, they fight for the freedom. No, it's only good good people that actually know what the freedom is. Our grand, grandparents and, and all all other soldiers fought for freedom in you know Middle East and in, in European in Europe in 1940s to free the nations and now we need to suffer no I'm sorry I agree we fought for our rights before we can exactly. see when they're being taken exactly. and when we have to fight for exactly. them now and these guys <clears throat> supposed to protect us and not the government they supposed to they supposed to know what the sniff uh, to sniff and test is like if the orders <laughs> Or then they take, don't pass the sniff test, and they say it's not morally acceptable by the, like, your moral standards, you're not doing the proper thing. You know, they might say, we're doing our job. No, dude. The Nuremberg trial of the, for the, like, German Nazis, it didn't stand this argument we were doing our job. No, they were murderers and killers of the innocent people. Six million Jews died, and we need to repeat that statement over and over again, so the history wouldn't re like wouldn't uh, repeat itself. If we don't tell the world six million Jews died, the history will repeat. And it's like anti-Semitism rampaging in U.S. and in, in Canada. All this Trudeau propaganda with the socialist uh, things, and and nobody uh, people following this. I'm sorry, it's not gonna happen. We're gonna fight for our rights and freedom. I'm with you, brother. I'm with you. <laughs> exactly. Mr. Alex, do you want to share your email? I'm emailing people about the offline info war as well. Online's fine. Info but wars? Yeah, no, the offline. Basically, what we did is we put up posters and flyers. We reached out to people because protests are great to show numbers. But I think if even half of us, I think 300 men yeah. and one million dollars in resources could save Toronto. Just 300 men consistently Wait, reaching out. Just to, say, to send me the information? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, just scratch down your email sure. because I know there's so many guys I meet that are sort of frustrated. I'm following you know? the info. I follow uh, Flecka Talks and Mike, Mark Dice and all these guys. Yeah. I do. Uh, well, they've been un unpersoned. All these people have been unpersoned. That's right. exactly what's happened in the fictional world of uh, George Orwell, but this is what we experience currently. Exactly like this. That's Absolutely. Exactly what it is. Absolutely. Well, basically, I think that if we show we get along better than most people, and then we reach out to other people, we can convince them that we're not crazy, we're not wrong, we're not mean, and we can help them think for themselves. Like my colleagues and I sometimes at our table. There it's, you go. It's Al Fame. Al Fame, A L F A M E, yeah. 1972. At gmail.com, that's correct. Okay, cool. Thank you, sir. Thank no you, uh, uh, Dave, right? Alex, sorry, Alex. Sorry yeah, about that. Alex. I was re I'm reading. I'm reading Dave. While I'm saying, I mean it's Alex. Person, Al yeah. Fame. Um, but no, basically, you know, w what I'm saying is that we we got along and we were respected by people in Toronto and respected by the cops. We were covered by CBC. Parents came up to us. And I'm not trying to brag. I'm not trying to make a stink about it. I'm merely saying that all these people out here that are confused and scared, if we show that we're cool, like imagine a couple of guys are cooler than other guys can be. We're cool, right? Yeah. If we show we're cool and you want to be cool, here's partly how. Get because informed, you know get active, saying? feel your balls. Listen, there's, a, exactly. there's a story about the guys and say, listen, uh, somebody, uh, so people like, it's, it's basically Nazis. Some people say, oh, it, it's, it's not connected to me. I'm not Jewish, so they will talk all the Jews. The next time they come for somebody else and it says, I don't belong to this group, so it doesn't concern me. They took all of them. The next time, the other group. It's not concerning me, I don't belong to them. And then they came for him, but there's nobody to speak like yep. to protect him. The classic Pastor Niemöller quote. Last yep. resort. And they will going to go house by house and chipping, vaccinating, and whatever they want to do with us. No. I'm you know sorry. what, brother? I think we I'll give you a pound. I think we, I think, I think we like this place too much to let it fall like exactly. that. So, and plus, we have too much history. We know too much. Thanks to what you, you guys went through. Sorry about and the Russian people. Right now but we know. Using this agenda of a false virus to pursue their goals. Yeah. Some of them creating emergency to uh, ban weapons. Some of them to create a governments, um, whatever coalition. Some of them just to be more dictatorship to implement and everything else. Watching this video of how they try to put now social 
just this distancing in school, which is ridiculous. And who's gonna suffer? The teachers, most of the children. They will never implement and they never will dictate to children what to do. Yeah. So what they gonna do? Kill the children? No, I'm sorry. Yeah. My child won't go to this freaking school with it. Stay here, wash your hands, whatever, do stop. No, sir, no. I'm glad, man. And what did you do during the great flu? You didn't just watch Netflix and clean the garage. You got out there and you uh, you made I'm sure. I'm out and staying my son. Exactly. Here, I want to I want to feel the sun. I'm with you. I'm with you. I want to be out. Nice to meet you, Mr. Alex, Thank young you so lady. Much. Nice to meet you. Right. Yeah, we'll be in touch. Yeah, please. Mm -hmm. All right. Ooh. All right. Hey, girls. You want to talk about why you're holding signs? No. How about you? Sure. Okay. Quarantine is killing us. I'm a nurse. Fantastic. Um, so, uh, what's your first name and, and what's your message? Um, I'm Hetty, and my message is the fact that this quarantine causes people to socially isolate. They don't come to hospital because they're fearful of contact with COVID, and their physical health deteriorates. Their mental health is going down. The rate of antidepressants and anti-anxiety meds—they've um, been increased by so much. People are not getting the help they need when they should. The amount of elective surgeries that are essential have been canceled. The hospitals are not improving. In fact, they're rather empty in a lot of places. And I just want people to think about the fact that once we go back to normal, whatever that is, the influx into the healthcare system is going to be astronomical. And it's going to probably be worse than you could ever even imagine. I'm with you. I heard Dr. Shiva Ayadurai. I don't know if you've ever heard of him, but um, heard. you've heard of him? So Dr. Shiva, he basically said that the, among the worst things for your health, if not the worst, is isolation. Isolation kills. Yeah, it leads to depression. It leads to this. He's talked about how sometimes women come over from India with arranged marriages after the guy was already working here. Then they live alone in the suburbs away from their social setting in India. And they often feel suicidal because we are people who need people. And being social, socialist distancing, isolated and all that uh, is actually going to cause more health problems. Yeah, or and my specialty is mental health. Like, I, I'm living it every day. I'm seeing the repercussions from day one. So... I just want people to consider that maybe something is actually worse off. I'm with you. The cure could be worse than the disease. Awesome, Miss Hetty. Would you like to share your email? I'm emailing people about this. No? Nope. Yeah, okay, don't worry about it. Nope. It's nice to meet you. We're all polite patriots. I don't care. It's totally fine. But I figure if half of us here um, get active on the streets and reach out to everybody else, we can say, at least consider this. While the media makes you interested, at least consider what we have to say. And there you go. Nice to meet you, young lady. And thank you for being here. And thank you for helping out. Cheers. How about you guys? Hello, young man. Hello, sir. Would you like to talk about why you're um, why you're holding signs? What's going on? And your first name? Steve. Steve. Awesome, Steve. So silence is consent. What's going on? Well, the message says it all. If you, uh, if you don't speak up, you basically are admitting to whatever it is that they give you, whatever they tell you, whatever the government says, do this, do that. If you don't make a voice about it or stand up for your rights and freedom, stand up for what... Uh, what we need to fight for every day in our lives, and that's working and bu building our families. I have my whole family here today with all my kids. Fantastic. To show them what it means to, to stand up for our rights and our freedom, so that they just can't come and blindly take it away. So if you don't speak, you don't say anything, well, then you don't have a voice. You basically are shut in, and you're accepting whatever it is that they throw at you. You're basically condoning it. You're basically saying, yeah, whatever, I'll take it. But we're here to say, no, we're not going to take it. We're not going to stand up for it. Uh, for what they're throwing at us. We're going to do our research and do our due diligence. We're going to do this intelligently. We're not just going to be yahoos coming here and, and because everybody else here is making noise and, and stupid remark remarks. We're going to be very smart about this and, and do the research. Talk, listen to the doctors. Listen to those that know that are in the, the information and the knowledge. Watch how other countries deal with dictators and what happens in their countries when you give away your rights. We'll see what happens. If we start giving away our rights, it's going to be, we're the next in line. So this is a country that's free. It's built on our ancestors and our grandparents who fought for this freedom. We're standing for them today. Um, if we don't stand and show what they did for the hard work for us, for my generation, not only for me, for my, the next generation, what are we saying? Why are we, why are we even here? There's people that left countries to come to this country because of the freedoms that this country represents. Now we have dictators in place. I'm sorry, but that's what he is. When he can take 1,500 guns off a of lips, just like that, the snap of a finger from the writing of a pen, you tell me that's not dictatorship? With no debate, no discussion, no, no, no pros and cons. Just whatever. You know, take advantage of 
a COVID virus, take advantage of a shooting in Nova Scotia, use it to their, you know, quote unquote agenda, and then just feed it to us and say, here you go, take it. No, no thanks. So that's basically what it is. Basically, make it stand, say what's right, fight for the freedoms, acknowledge that uh, the country is a beautiful country. We love it. That's we built it from our, our ancestors all the way up to where we are today. We're just not going to throw it away and give it away for, for the sake of the government controlling it. I agree. I agree. Here, here. Steve, do you want to do you want to share write your email down? I'm, I'm contacting people about other things we can do about this if you're if you're concerned. Well, it's a Steve Coach at gmail.com. Sure. Here you go. Here, I'll hold that, and you can hold this, and uh, and I'll hold you sign for a sec. And there you go. But scratch it down. But there's so many people that are concerned, and I think if we sh if we show how many of us there are at say a protest, like two, three hundred of us, and then if a bunch of us reach out to other people and say, look, we're not crazy, we're in solidarity. Here's some info. Think for yourselves. Um, you know, if you if it's stupid, laugh. If it's smart, enjoy. Then I think we can we can wake people up. I have a job. I have a retirement. I don't need to be here. I have enough money. Sure. But I'm not here because of me. Right. I'm here for those people that have children at home. Yep. A job that they don't have. Yep. And they're starving. And they're they're living in a country like this. Starving. Yep. It's yep. incredible. It's insane. It's insane. It totally is. So. Dude, we should all be rich. There you go, sir. Thank you. And that's Steve O. A coach. Yeah, Steve O. Coach at gmail. Steve O. Coach at gmail.com. Okay, beauty. Um, I'm with you, brother. Listen, we should all be like Dubai. Right? We got 35 million people in the second largest country in the world full of resources. Why are we short energy? Why are we short anything? We're not. We, we, we have it. We're just <clears throat> giving it away, we're undermining the value, or protecting the things that we don't need to protect. It should be, it should be out there for all of us to use. All of us to benefit. That's what free countries about. It's not about locking it down and taking it away from people. Absolutely.